iPad has a range of built-in tools that can help support writing. In this tutorial, I will show you where they are and how you can use them. This tutorial can also be used on an iPhone, but the smaller screen may make it more difficult to see. There are four ways that you can use an iPad to support writing. The first is to use typing feedback. The second way is to use Siri, or by talking or dictating to the iPad, and your dictated words are converted to text. This is known as speech recognition. The third way is to use predictive or word prediction when you press the letters on a keyboard to type a word and the iPad guesses or chooses the correct word. And the fourth way is to use check spelling, which is the iPad's built-in spell checker. So the first thing we need to do is to turn on typing feedback. And to turn on typing feedback, we need to find the settings icon. So I've got it here in my dock. Now, if you can't see it there, what we can also do is a spotlight search for it. So just by sliding my finger on the ice, on the iPad, um, it brings up what's called Spotlight Search. And you can see that I've already been doing a search for it before. So if I type in Settings, and then it appears there. So that's Spotlight Search by sliding your finger down onto the iPad. So let's open up Settings. And what I want to do is in Settings, we want to go to Accessibility. So there's Accessibility. I click on or tap onto Accessibility. And then from there, we want to move down to we find Spoken Content. So click on Spoken Content. And uh, if you've seen the uh, using the iPad to support reading, you'd be familiar with these. So we want, now we need to go down to Typing Feedback. So let's type Typing Feedback. And we have some options in here. So we can either have it so it speaks characters. So if we click on, it will speak each individual character. If we click on character hints, it will read the letters phonetically. So, for example, B, if you type in B, it will read out Bravo. If you type out A, it will read out Alpha, so A Alpha. So you really need to explore and experiment with these to see which ones you think will be most worthwhile. But just for demonstration purposes, what I'd like to do is just turn on Speak Words, and then we can, sh uh, we can come back to some of these other things later. Okay, so Speak Words is what we want to do. And now what I'm going to do is demonstrate how they will work in different kinds of apps. So the first one I'm going to look at is down here is in notes. And uh, we're just going to type something about the Romans. So we can say uh, the, so let's type in the, the, and you can hear it's reading it back. Romans. Invaded. Scotland. Scotland. Okay. Um, so the other thing, of course, we can do, but as we've done before, if we just move our fingers from the from the top. Romans invaded Scotland. Okay. We can then have that proofread as well. So that's what we're using typing feedback. So that's using it in notes, and it works much the same if I was to bring up. So if I go down here and I bring up Microsoft Word, let's do the same sentence in there. So let's type in the. the. Romans. Invaded. Scotland. Scotland. Okay, and we can also do speak selection. Let's do speak selection this time. So when I hold my finger down on the word, we select all the text and we say speak. Romans invaded Scotland. Okay, so great ways of, of using that. The other way you can also use uh, the sort of sp uh, typing feedback is if I go into Safari. So if I want to type something into Safari, we can maybe type in, say, Wikipedia. Wikipedia. And do a search for that. Wikipedia. Okay, so you've got extra support in there. So really, wherever there's an option to add text, uh, type in feedback, we'll, we'll read it back. Now what I want to do is to go back and turn off 
typing feedback. Otherwise, it will be sort of speaking aloud all the time. So let's just go back and we'll, we'll turn that off. So I'm just going to go back to my home button into settings again, down into accessibility, into spoken content, type in feedback and then turn it off. Siri can best be explained as a digital assistant on your iPad or iPhone. For example, by pressing the home button on your iPad or your iPhone, you can ask Siri questions about the weather, direction to places and much more. But Siri can also be used to support writing by dictating your thoughts and ideas into a word processor, such as Notes or Microsoft Word. Siri converts spoken words into text. Although Siri is very accurate, it is still important to proofread the dictated text just to make sure. One thing to remember is that Siri requires either Wi-Fi or 4G to work. To turn on Siri, go to Settings, then to General, then to Keyboard, and we want to scroll down to the bottom till we see Enable Dictation. OK, so let's just turn that on and we want to say yes to Enable Dictation. Just tap that with my finger and Enable Dictation's on. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to open up Microsoft Word, the Word app. And just let it open the document. OK, there we have. OK, so I'm going to type in some text just by using my voice. And to do that, I first of all have to just press the microphone icon just down here. OK, so I'm going to click onto the microphone icon. The Romans in Scotland. Full stop, new line. In Roman times, comma, there was no such country as Scotland, full stop. The area of Britain, now known as Scotland, was called Caledonia, comma, and the people were known as the Caledonians, full stop. So now what I want to do is just to proofread the text that I've dictated just to make sure it's accurate. So to do that, I, you can see I'm in, I go from home to review, and review, I have the speak aloud button, which we looked at earlier, so let's just tap the into Romans that. The Romans in Scotland. In Roman times, there was no such country of Scotland. The area of Britain 9 order as Scotland was called Caledonia, and the people were known as the Caledonians. OK, so we can see there are some mistakes in there. So what we can now do in is we can actually just go in and edit that to correct it. And that's just by tapping on and then we could then find the mistakes and make those changes. So it's just important to know, although Siri is very good and very accurate, it can make mistakes. Now, as well as typing or dictating your voice into Siri, you can also ask it questions, as I mentioned earlier. So let's try a couple of examples. So I'm going to press the home button for a couple of seconds. Spell accommodation. Accommodation, A, C, C, O, M, M, O, D, A, T, I, O, N. Define accommodation. A room, group of rooms, or building in which someone may live or stay. Do you want to hear the next one? No, thank you. I'm now going to look at Predictive. So predictive or predictive text, or sometimes known as word prediction, is when you type the first or second character on the keyboard and the computer or the iPad guesses what it thinks it's going to be. So this can be very useful to help improve both writing accuracy and speed. There's a couple of things we need to do to switch on our predictive. So the first thing we need to do is to go back to general, so into general, and then let's go down to till we find a keyboard. And there's keyboard there. So general, so settings, general and keyboard. And then let's scroll down till we find 
predictive. So it might be as default, it might be turned off. So what I'm going to do is just turn it on. So that's the first step. The second step is to scroll down to accessibility and then back to where we were in spoken content. And okay, and then back into where we were before, typing feedback. And at the bottom, we want to use hold to speak predictions. And this is really quite important. And you can see there, when typing, when typing predictions are enabled, tap and hold each word to hear it spoken aloud. So you can see the words, and then you can tap on the word to hear it. Okay, so let's go to my home button. And uh, let's do a thing with, with Romans invaded Scotland. And let's now just invade that. So um, let's think of a sentence that we could do. So I'm going to write in Roman times. Um, okay, in Roman times. In Okay, and I'm going to now type in my R and O. And you can see already that it's down here. It's predicting the word Romans. OK, so we could just use that, but it wouldn't be uh, grammatically right. So let's just let's go on a bit. So now we can see in Roman. OK, now we remember we, we enabled so we can. Roman. OK, so now we can have that read aloud just by tapping it. We can we can do and we can go Romans. through each of them. Rom. Romans. Okay. Roman. And uh, it's speaking because I'm just holding Romans. my finger down. Rom. Romans. Roman. And when I find the right one, I just release my finger and it puts it in. Okay, so in Roman times, so again, here's time there. It's maybe we might have to go a little bit further just to get that times, and there's times there. Timeline, times. Times, which, and there. While, which. Okay, and let that go, which, I'm going to see, was a long time ago was a uh, long and now I'm hardly using the keyboard you can see because you can see that predictive is predicting these word, words for me okay in context so there's time ago and let's put that down and then of course let's just do the speak screen as we did before so tap on and select let's go down to where it is and uh, so hold it down and select and just have that sentence read back to us. If I can get that, that's better. Okay, and then speak. In Roman times, which was a long time ago. Okay, so we can do that in notes, but we can also do a similar thing in Word. So again, we've got the word prediction there and we can do exactly the same as we So it works across lots of um, applications as well. Another thing I'd like to talk about when using, when typing, is maybe using a, what's called a Bluetooth keyboard. So just now what I've been doing is I've been using the on-screen keyboard. Now that could take, you know, quite a long time to type. So for some uh, learners, it might be easier if they use an actual physical keyboard. So, uh, I'm going to just demonstrate what a Bluetooth keyboard is. So I'm just going to quickly show you a picture of one. So there's a photograph of a Bluetooth keyboard. And then I'm going to enable my Bluetooth keyboard that I'm using, and I'm going to use the keyboard to type on so you get a better idea. So hopefully, if all's working, I'm just going to go into settings and I'm going to go uh, from there. I'm going to look for Bluetooth. I've got quite a lot of devices on here. And I'm going to look for the, that's the keyboard there. The anchor is the one I'm using. I'm going to turn that on. So there it is, it's connected. And uh, now I'm going to go in into notes and do a bit of typing. So you can see what's happened now is because I've got the Bluetooth keyboard is the word prediction has moved to the bottom. So I can still use word prediction, but I can also I can also type. So I'm going to say, uh, let's do in the, and again, just down at the bottom, you can see we've got word prediction going on uh, there. And I'm going to do in the summer of AD uh, 84, 84, 
let's see the Romans and so forth. So that might be a, an easy way of using a non-screen keyboard or, or, or using a Bluetooth keyboard instead of a non-screen keyboard. Or even if you have a USB, you can plug uh, a USB directly into the computer. And I'll show you the connector that you need for that just now. So here's the connector. And you just plug that straight into the um, lightning port on your iPad and you can use a, an external keyboard to type with. You can also use the iPad's built-in tools to help with spelling. For example, the iPad has a spelling checker and something called autocorrect. The best way to explain autocorrect is something that works in the background that looks for misspelt words as they are being typed and automatically corrects them for you. So, for example, now if I go down to notes and click on notes and open this new document, I go full screen, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the word the, but I'm going to spell it wrong. And notice how autocorrect checks the spelling for me. So I'm going to spell T E H, then press the space bar. So you can see that's a good example of using autocorrect. Spell checking is also another feature that the iPad has. So let me give you an example of a misspelled word. Okay, so let me go down to the next line. And uh, I'm going to just make sure the text is still nice and big. So let's heading. And I'm going to type in the word February, but I'm going to spell it wrong. So let's type in F E B U A. Of course, we could use the predictive text there to help us. Let's just February and we get a red underline. So to fix the spelling or to correct the spelling, we can just tap onto it and then we're giving the spelling up there. So let's go February. Okay, so that's spell checking and autocorrect. So the way to turn that on, if it's not by default on your keyboard, is we need to go down into settings. So into settings. And then let's just go back a level because we want to go back to there. We want to go to general, then to keyboard. Uh, and then you can see we've got auto correction. So auto correction to auto correct the words. And then just down. What I'm looking for now is check spelling. And we can then turn that off and turn it back on again. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please experiment with the different tools. You won't damage the iPad and you can easily just go back to turn everything on and off. Thank you.